Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. May I have your attention, please? Thank you. Raise your hand at this time if you did not get a red mark for today, the 4th of November. Everybody good with your red marks? Awesome. Let's go ahead and make sure now we can apply those derivative shortcut rules that we work so hard to memorize, right? Commit to memory so we know them by heart so that we can apply them depending upon what overall function rule presents itself. So here we go. I know the derivative of an inverse sine function, because we memorize it, is 1 over the square root of 1 minus the input squared times the derivative of the input, right? And that's going to allow us to calculate all these, all these derivatives. And so I know that y prime is given by 1 over the square root of 1 minus the input squared times the derivative of the input. It's just that my input is an x, it's 1 minus 2x. And so I have that times the derivative of my input. My input was 1 minus 2x, so the derivative of my input is negative 2. And we can go ahead and rewrite as a single fraction. This would look like negative 2 over square root of 1 minus quantity 1 minus 2x squared. If you're symbolically calculating the derivative function, then this would be fine. If this were a multiple choice item on an AP exam, this might not appear as one of the responses, right? What might they do? They may foil this quantity down here and combine like terms. And so just be aware that they might, right, rearrange this algebraically by foiling this quantity and combining like terms, right? And that would be your choice. And so I just want to make sure that you're comfortable rewriting that in multiple representations. Uh, if, if it were a, a multiple choice question. But symbolically, this is fine. Go ahead and raise your hand if you had number one correct. So go ahead, number one correct. Good job with the negative two. All right, let's take a look at number two. What overall words are we going to start with? Go ahead and share with the class when I call on you. So what overall words are we going to be starting with to do our number two derivative calculation? Nikki? Um, Absolutely. Thank you, Nikki. And so we'll be using the quotient rule, the quotient rule, in order to calculate the derivative here. So here we go. The derivative of a quotient of two functions, as Nikki said, is the derivative of the numerator. Cotangent goes to opposite of cosecant squared of x, right, times the denominator, that is e to the x, minus the numerator. Oh, goodness. And I can see already we're going to have to go like this. We're going we're gonna to follow that equal sign down there. <laughs> minus the numerator, cotangent of x, times the derivative of the denominator, e to the x differentiates to e to the x, all over the denominator squared. That would be e to the x quantity squared. OK, so there's our first step. Let's check that we have our words. The derivative of the quotient of two functions is the derivative of the numerator times the denominator, minus the numerator, times the derivative of the denominator, all over the denominator squared. Let's go ahead and see if we can make that any prettier. I uh, don't know that we can. If we take an e to the x out of everybody, right, on top and reduce it once, we'll get negative cosecant squared x minus cotangent x all over e to the x. Is that right? Yeah, awesome. So raise your hand if you had number two correct. Number two? Good job, you guys. Thanks for coming down. Awesome. All right. Let's go ahead and see then what overall overall words we're going to apply to number three. So what what is number three overall for my derivative words? Jake? Uh, use an exponential. So you take the natural log of the base times the original function times the derivative of the exponent. Awesome. Thank you, Jake. That's exactly right. And so the derivative of an exponential is the exponential function itself times the derivative of the exponent. The derivative of secant x is secant x tangent x times the natural log of the base, and there's my ln7. Perfect. And so I don't know that there's ways to make that look prettier, right? <laughs> it kind of is what it is. So raise your hand if you get number three correct. Number three? Yes, you guys are great. And L of M is given by inverse tangent, so we know our derivative of inverse tangent is 1 over 1 plus the input squared times the derivative of the input. It's just that my input is one, uh, 3 minus m squared. 
So the derivative of my input is negative 2m. So I have a single fraction. It looks like I'm getting negative 2m over 1 plus, and this will be 3 minus m squared squared. And this could certainly be, right, boiled out again, giving you 9 minus 6m squared plus m to the fourth. Combining with that one will give you 10, right? It will be 10 minus 6m squared plus m to the fourth. And that could also appear as one of the choices. Awesome. What questions do you guys have on your derivative calculation? Your derivative calculation. So let's go ahead and make sure we're comfortable with our algebraic tangent line calculation. We need to be able to find the equation of tangent line exactly and algebraically using our shortcut rules. Remember, we need the same three things if we're going to write the equation of tangent line. We need to know the x coordinate of the point of tangency, the y coordinate of the point of tangency, and the slope of the tangent line. Right? So if we have those three things, then we can write the equation for a tangent line. So typically we're given the x coordinate of the point of tangency, oh, when we are, negative 2. Oftentimes we're not given the y coordinate of the point of tangency, but we can find it easily by evaluating my original functional at my x value concern. And it looks like we've already been told that that's negative 3. I'm going to do a quick check because remember the skeptic. <laughs> Such a pessimist, Mr. Fitz. <laughs> negative 2, quantity square is 4. Plus 4 is 8, minus 11 is 8. So by golly, it is negative 3. Good. So there's our point of tangency. And then lastly, where do I go to get the slope of the tangent line? What do we need to do to find the slope of the tangent line? Take the derivative of that function of the point. Absolutely. So we'll use our shortcut rules to find our derivative equation f prime of x and evaluate it at that point when x equals negative 2 and then see what it gives me for the slope. That's what I'll use for the slope of my tangent line to the curve at that point. So here we go. Go ahead and tell the class the derivative of the equation. Savannah? 2x minus 2. Thank you. 2x minus 2 is my derivative of the equation and we'll evaluate that on my x value of concern. So f prime of negative 2 equals Two times negative two is negative four minus two is negative six. Is that right? Raise your hand if you had negative six for the slope of the tangent line. Negative six for the slope of the tangent line? Perfect. Now, there's nothing to it but to do it. We'll simply rewrite my y minus y sub one equals m times quantity x minus x sub one. It's just that we'll plug in our slope, negative six, for m that we calculated, my x coordinate of the point of tangency that we were given, and the y coordinate of the point of tangency. Can we do that, or is that dangerous? So I get y plus 3 equals negative 6 times quantity x plus 2. And raise your hand if you already had that. So you already have that? You could certainly rearrange it. You could rearrange it by solving for y if you wanted to make it look like y equals mx plus b in slope-intercept form, or simply subtract over the 3 if you wanted to be able to enter your y equals menu and not mess around with distributing or combining like terms. Either one is fine if there's not directions. If it says put it in a specific form, then we want to rearrange it. So this is fine for an algebraic generation. However, we could certainly rewrite that just like we could have rewritten our inverse sine and inverse tangent derivative rules too. Heavy? Wait, why isn't B in that one? Pardon? Why isn't B in that one? You mean Y equals MX plus B? Yeah. Oh, I just chose to stop right here because the uh, equation, the type of equation, the form of equation wasn't specified in the directions. But we certainly could if we wanted to enter it, right? You could go ahead and solve for We could solve for Y by distributing through and then combining with terms, and that's fine, right? So the choice is yours if, if the directions don't specify. Now, if they do, and we want slope intercept form, or we want to enter our calculator, right? We want to solve for Y by adding, or, I'm sorry, subtracting them to 3, or we could go all the way to check yours. So we get negative 6 times a positive 2 would be negative 12, and then subtract them to 3, so I'm looking like minus. 15, is that what you got? So if we were, went ahead and solved for, if we solve for y and rewrote the slope intercept form, we get y equals negative 6x minus 15. That's also useful if you're going to use the built in software from your grapher to do second calculate, right? Second calculate. Then that's going to give you, um, I'm sorry, second program is the draw, tangent, negative 2, enter, and it'll spit out a decimal approximation that should be close to those. Awesome. What questions do you guys have about your work today? 
And I'm super excited um, about our le lesson today. We're going to look at implicitly defined relations. And there's a variety of relationships in the real world that make sense to define implicitly. So we'll see what, the, what that looks like for an implicit relation instead of an explicit relation. Uh, and we're not talking about parental warning, right? Parental advisory, explicit lyrics. We're talking about an explicitly defined relation. So we'll see the difference between those two. And we'll also do some applications uh, uh, and see how that can be useful for you. But first, let's get you credit for your OTL number five. So at this time, please give yourself credit for OTL number five out of 27. Make sure multiple pages are stapled together, please. They're stapled over on the side activity table and one at the front, the front desk. Give yourself credit for those you complete out of 27, please. Divide, enter, multiply by two. Make sure that you are rounding to the nearest half point and boxing your kind of camera score, please, nice and big. A final check that your name, 2A, number 5, are labeled on top. Go ahead and pass from the back to the front, please. Front rows, make sure they're facing the same direction. I appreciate your help. Let's go ahead and get cracking with our instructional objective today. So for our warm-up today, I want you to go ahead and with your partner now, I want you to write an equation that represents the given information in the verbal description. So we're going to write an equation for each described situation. In the first, the circle with radius 10 is centered at the origin. Go ahead and see what equation would represent that verbal description. Number two, if you don't want to stand up for the equation of circle, you guys come back to that one. But number two, Francie has a money jar full of quarters and dimes. The total value is 5250. How can you represent that with an equation using variables and operations and equal signs? Delbert is dieting. His weight when he started the diet was 295 pounds, and he is losing three pounds per week. Right? What relation could model that with variables in the equation? Go ahead and finish each of these four with your partner. Be ready to share with the whole class. And so I'll have you come down and write your equation on the whiteboard. So you can talk about it with your partner. I know. Okay. 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 Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's time, that time, we're going to share 
your equations that you translated each verbal description into. And so go ahead and use your equation, and we can see which, uh, what um, quantities your variables might stand for, right, based on the, the written description after you show your equation. So a circle with radius 10 is centered at the origin. What equation would represent that relation? What equation would represent that relation? Test. Um, x squared plus y squared equals two. Ah, the standard, the standard form for a circle is x squared plus y squared equals r squared, where r is my radius and x comma y is any point on the, that circle. Excellent. Raise your hand get x squared plus y squared equals 10 squared or, or 100. Good job. So standard form of the equation of a circle. Uh, Francie's got a money jar full of quarters and dimes. The total value of that money jar is 52.50, right? So what would that look like as a, an equation? Emily? Awesome. Thank you, Emily. And Q then would represent what? The number of quarters in her jar, and D would be the number of dimes. Raise your hand if you had a similar equation for number two. Great, thanks. Delbert's dieting his weight when he started the diet was 295. Pounds and he's losing three pounds per week. How could we represent that with an equation, Preston? Y equals two ninety-five. Y equals two ninety-five minus three x, where y is Delbert's weight in pounds, and x would be the number of weeks since he started the diet. Raise your hand if you had the same the same relation for number three. Great, and one to go for a local theater production. Adult tickets cost twenty dollars. Youth tickets cost ten dollars. The income for one showing was four hundred thirty dollars. How could we represent that with a with an equation? Jake, four four thirty equals twenty x plus ten y, and four twenty is adult or x is adult and y is kids. Awesome. Or ten represents the number of adult tickets sold, and y represents the number of youth tickets sold. Raise your hand. Get the same thing for four. Okay. Here we go. One of these things is doing its own thing. One of these things just doesn't belong, right? One of these things is not like the others. Um, now it's time to play along. I don't know. So guess what? One of these, one of these uh, equations is an explicit relation. Three of them are implicit relations. And so three of these are implicitly defined relations. One of them is an explicit relation. Go and decide with your partner then the difference between explicit relation versus implicit relation. What would be the defining characteristic then? Okay, so what kind of thoughts are you having for implicit relation versus explicit relation, right, based on three of these are implicit relations and one of these is an explicit relation? So what do you think the defining characteristic might be? Brandon? Well, my guess is that a explicit relationship includes a definite, independent, and dependent variable, while a an implicit relationship, there's no true way to tell the difference. And and how can you how can you see that in the equation? Well, in the equation both variables are on the same side for equal sign. Absolutely. Of the relation. Absolutely. And so in, a, in an implicit relation, we've got independent dependent variables, right? We've got variables on the same side of the equation mixed up. In an explicit relation, we have one variable isolated on one side of the equal side alone written in terms of one or more other variables. And that's exactly our defining characteristic. And so for us on your note sheet, an explicit relation, one variable is isolated and written explicitly in terms of other variables on the other side of the equation, versus an implicit relation, two or more variables are mixed together on the same side of the equation. So when we've got two or more variables mixed together on the same side of the equation, that's implicit. That's an implicit relation. In order to be an explicit relation, we have to have one variable solved for, right? Alone on one side of the equal sign, and then written in terms of the others.
it makes sense to define a variety of real world relationships implicitly, and you just saw several of them on the previous page. In fact, that's going to be the topic for our Moodle discussion forum next week. This week is antiderivatives round two, and you guys have done a great job with that so far. Next week is going to involve implicitly defined relations, okay, and calculus. What we're going to do first, though, is get the nuts and bolts for how to calculate derivatives when we have an implicitly defined relation as opposed to just plain Jane explicit in your bar. Monica? Is an implicit um, equation always going to be equal to some constant? Not necessarily. All right. Usually, usually that is the case, but not necessarily. We just need to have um, variables mixed together on the same side of the equation, right? Um, and the other side not equal a single variable. And so when we have one variable isolated alone on one side of the equal sign and then written in terms of others, then it's explicit, yeah. right? But if we have a mix on the same side, then we're talking about an implicitly defined relation. All right, a typical, um, a typical multiple choice question involving implicit differentiation then would be finding dy dx, that is the derivative of y with respect to x or y prime, when we have x's and y's mixed together on the same side of the equation. And so in order to do this, right, you're going to um, find the derivative of each term with respect to x, just as we've done in the past. It's just that whenever you differentiate a term involving y, you'll utilize the chain rule. Just like when you differentiate e to the y with respect to x, you had to include the exponential itself and then times the derivative of the exponent, the inner function, and spit out a y prime. When we generate our rules for our inverse trig functions and we differentiated sine of y, with respect to x, we did the derivative of sine is cosine of y, the inner function, and then times the derivative of the inner function, y prime. So basically, anytime you differentiate a term involving y, you have to spit out a y prime. Our x terms will be differentiated just as we've always done. So here we go. We'll differentiate each side with respect to x. So on the left-hand side, The derivative with respect to x of x squared is simply 2x plus, and then the derivative of y to the fourth. Well, we're going to use the power rule still because we're differentiating a power function. It's just that my base isn't just x, it's y. It's self a function of x, so we need to multiply by the derivative of the base. Here we go. The derivative of a, net, a power function is exponent times the base raised to 1 less times the derivative of the base. What's the derivative of the base? y prime, or dy dx. And then on the right hand side, the derivative with respect to x of 5 is 0. And so what we're going to do is find dy dx, and there it is. So now because, well, uh, we'll go ahead and isolate that. We'll solve for dy dx because we're asked to find what dy dx is. From now on, we'll typically use y prime there just because it's shorter. Right? But I want you to know y prime and dy dx are equivalent. They both are the first derivative of y with respect to x. All right, so let's go ahead and solve for dy dx then. I get dy dx by subtracting over 2x and dividing by 4y cubed. Because our original relation, x squared plus y um, to the fourth equals 5, had x and y mixed up in the definition. It's okay to have x's and y's mixed up in my in my definition for y prime or dy dx. So, implicit differentiation is basically applying the chain rule. Anytime you differentiate a, a, a term that has y in it, it spits out a y prime or dy dx. Could we find an equation to the tangent line to that original relation at a point two comma negative one? We most certainly could. All we'll do is we'll use the same three things. We need the x point, the x coordinate of the point of tangency, the y coordinate of the point of tangency, and if you guessed it, the slope of the tangent line. When we're doing an implicit, an implicit differentiation problem, typically we're given both x and y just like the lower. And so it looks like free of charge, we have x and we have y. Now I just need the slope. Well, where, pray tell me, would we go to find the slope of an original relation? Where would we find its slope? Jake? The derivative of the original function. And our derivative of our original relation in this case is dy dx equals opposite of 2x over 4y cubed. And so to get our slope, we'll simply evaluate dy dx at our point. Bring in the whole point? 
point or just the x value? Well, that's a great question. So do we have to put in the whole point or just the x value? The whole point. The whole point because I have both x's and y's in my definition. Typically, these implicit defined relations, right, aren't functions. They're just relations. And so we oftentimes have like, oh, maybe an ellipse. Right or a football where it does matter. Right, there might be two places when x equals when x equals two. There might be two y coordinates returned, and I'll show you a picture on the next slide. So here we go. Let's evaluate our dy dx at the point two comma negative one, and that will be opposite of two times my x coordinate over four times my oh, over my y coordinate cubed. And what point was it? It was 2, comma, negative 1. It looks like the slope of my tangent line then will be negative 4 over negative 4 or positive 1. So it looks like we're getting 1 for the slope of our tangent line. How do I do with the signs? All right? Awesome. So what do we need to do? We'll just do our y minus y sub 1. So y plus 1 equals m, my slope, times quantity, x minus 2. And if everyone wanted to solve for slope-intercept form, we could do y equals x. And then minus 2 minus 1 is minus 3. Is that right? y equals x minus 3? OK. So let's go ahead and check and see. I went ahead and solved my original uh, equation for y explicitly so that I can enter my y equals menu. You don't have to do this right now. I just want you to know we could do that by subtracting over x squared and then undoing that fourth power. How would you undo a fourth power? Fourth root. We take the fourth root. And so my y would be given by, oh, I did it right here. y would be given by 5 minus x squared, and then we want the plus and minus because it's an even root. So the plus and minus four two. And that would look just like that. So I went ahead and entered my calculator. Just look. I want to check it out. This looks like an, like an ellipse kind of, doesn't it? You see that? It's not exactly right, an ellipse, because we've got different exponents there. It's not squared. It's not squared on both of my x and y's, but it looks kind of like a, I don't know. It looks like an uh, oval. Might, might be, yeah. And so I also included the negative y1. There's my bottom half. And of course, if I had better pixels on my calculator, this would be connected like a track. All right? There's, there's no jump here. It would be connected like a track. All right. So then if I want to know the point where x equals 2, comma, negative 1 would be right down here. And I entered that on my graph and calculator. We did draw, and voila, it looks like my calculator is doing its darndest to tell me y equals 1x minus 3. Everybody see that? So we did it correctly. Now, you don't need to do this right now. I just wanted to show you that implicitly defined relations oftentimes are relations, not functions, right? I mean, they're relations without being functions, so we've got kind of top halves and bottom halves, but we can still find a tangent line to that relation, and we did it algebraically. It's just that my derivative includes x's and y's just like my relation includes x's and y's. Let's try another. Let's find an equation of the tangent line to the curve x squared minus xy plus y squared equals 12 at the point negative 2, 2. So in order to find the equation of a tangent line, we need the x coordinate of the point of tangency, the y coordinate of the point of tangency, and the slope of the tangent line. Oftentimes, the first two are given for free in an implicitly defined relation type problem. It looks like negative 2, comma, 2. But I still need to find the slope of the tangent line. So where do I go to find the slope of the tangent line? What do I need, Kobe? Uh, the derivative. We need the derivative. And now I'll use y prime, since we didn't already have the notation dy dx. I'm going to use y prime because it's shorter to write in terms of notation. So what will we do? We'll differentiate both sides with respect to x. So the derivative with respect to x. And on the left-hand side, x squared minus xy plus y squared. On the right side, 12. Let's go ahead and differentiate term by term. Be very careful. Anytime you differentiate 
a y, a y quantity with respect to x, you're going to have to invoke the chain rule because it's not just differentiating an x, an x function with respect to x. We're differentiating a y function where the base is an inner function y that itself is a function of x. So we need to times the derivative of the base times the derivative of y is y prime. Let's try it. Term by term. The derivative with respect to x of x squared is 2x. That's easy. Now we've got the what? What rule do we have to use to differentiate x, y? Multiplication of Yeah, so this is a multiplication of functions. That's the product rule. Do you see that? That's x times y. So I've got to use my product words. Good thing we just memorized our rules for our rules quiz, comma, baby. The derivative of a product of two functions is the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. What's the derivative of y? y prime. And there's my y prime spit out by differentiating y plus. So let's check our, our derivative. The derivative of the first, I'll group that negative x as the first function, so that's negative 1 times the second, that's y, plus the first, that's negative x, times the derivative of the second, that's y prime. Plus, now we still have to differentiate y squared. Can we do that? Yeah. I'm going to use the pow, pow, power rule, power rule. And the derivative of a power rule is exponent times the base raised to 1 less times the derivative of the base. What's the derivative of y? y prime. So we get another y prime spit out. Can everybody see that? Equals, and on the right hand side, what's the derivative with respect to x of 12? Zero. Zero. Awesome. So what do we need for the slope? Kobe told us we need y prime, the first derivative. And so where is that? It well, looks like we've got two places where y prime is. And so in order to solve for y prime, that is, that is isolate the y prime, we can go ahead and subtract right, all the other terms to the other side, keep the y prime terms on one side. So I'll rewrite this as 2y y prime minus x y prime equals, and I'll add over that y term, and I'll subtract over the 2x term. So I'm adding or subtracting to get the y prime terms on one side and everything else on the other. Check to make sure I've done my signs correctly. Did I mess up with any positive negatives? So we still had a positive 2y y prime on the left. We have a negative x y prime on the left. Those first terms I subtracted over the 2x and I added over the 1y. Is that correct? Now what do we want to solve for? What we want to solve for y prime. And so let's go ahead and create a single y prime by doing a GCF, a greatest common factor problem. Let's factor out a y prime for each of those blue terms on the left. So we'll factor out a y prime to get a single y term, a y prime term rather. So in a reverse distributed property problem, y prime times 2y minus x equals 2y y prime minus x y prime. And then on the right hand side, we'll do nothing. And finally, I can solve for y prime. How will we get y prime alone here? Paul? Uh, divided by 2y minus x. Absolutely. We'll simply undo that multiplication, right, to get my y prime alone through division. So we'll divide both sides by that. So y prime equals, we'll divide both sides by 2y minus x, and I get y minus 2x all over 2y minus x. So we solve through division by undoing, undoing that multiplication. Which means that my slope of the tangent line, squiggle underline blue, will be gained by evaluating my y prime, my, my first derivative relation, at the point negative 2, comma 2. Let's do it. So we'll go ahead and evaluate this now at my point of concern. So I get y minus 2x over 2y minus x evaluated when x sub 1 is negative 2 and y sub 1 is 2. Couple guys arm. And let's see what we get for that. So I'm getting 2 plus 2 equals 4 over 4 plus 2 is 6. Are you guys getting 4 sixths? 
Two plus four is six. Over. Six over six. Two times two is four. Negative two times negative two is four plus so six over six. So one again. Yep. Thank you guys. That's my fault. So we're getting one again. Which means the slope of my tangent line, the last missing piece, is just simply one. And we can now write the equation. So y minus y sub 1, so y minus 2, equals m times quantity x minus x sub 1. So I'm getting x minus negative 2 is x plus 2. And a quick solve and rewrite, I'm getting y equals x plus 2, plus 2 is plus 4. Is that right, y equals x plus 4? All right, let's go ahead and see then what this is going to look like. So, in order to solve this for, is that space for me? In order to solve this, right, and enter in my calculator, I've got x's and y's mixed up in the same side of the equation, but it's not as easy as subtracting over the x term, right, and taking the fourth root, the way we were able to a couple times ago. What kind of tools might we employ in order to solve this for y so that I could enter in my graphic? That is, solve for y explicitly in terms of x. What might we have to do? Well, what kind of equation is this? Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a polynomial. It's a polynomial equation of degree two. two, right? So we've got a quadratic equation. A quadratic equation, right? Not only is it a quadratic equation of y in terms of x, but it's a quadratic equation of x in terms of y. And so we could we could solve this using the quadratic formula. And you're going to have an opportunity to do that for your stamp for your stamp in handout 48 at the end of today's class period. But I want you to know that the quadratic formula is going to be your tool for that. Because of our rules quiz, I want to make sure that we have enough time for our subsequent discussion. And so we're going to hold off on using the quadratic formula to solve that for y. That's going to be something you can work on with your 4A handout, but I want you to know that the quadratic form will be the tool. So that's what I did. I solved for y explicitly. In terms of x using the quadratic formula, I entered a positive and negative in my grapher. And look, this is like a football shape, right? It's like a football shape. And look, our graphing calculator, when doing second program draw, five tangent, they, uh, one entered, <coughs> produces a tangent line of, sorry, negative two entered. Produces the tangent line. We wanted y equals 1x plus 4. Let's see what it did. It did 1x plus 4. So it looks like we are correct. And we can see that tangent line coming and resting on top of that football. Awesome. All right. We may have time to revisit that. Let's find an equation of the, of the tangent line 2, x squared plus y squared equals 25 at the point 3 comma 4. So now with your partner, I want you to try this one. On your own. Let's go ahead and, and generate an equation of the change line. Go ahead and talk about it with your partner and then be ready to share.
as you're working, go ahead and do a quick visual check and see that you produce y prime, a y prime relation of negative x over y. What if you're going to got negative x over y for your derivative, the derivative relation, negative x over y? Excellent. We can evaluate that now at my point of concern. My point of tangency is 3, 4 in order to get my slope of the tangent line. So I get negative 3 fourths. And I can use that now for y minus y sub 1. So y minus 4 equals negative 3 fourths. times quantity x minus 3. And we could certainly solve that for y. If we didn't want to mess around with the fractions, if I wanted to enter my calculator right quickly, I could just put a plus 4 at the end of this and not do anything with the parentheses. Just leave it alone as negative 3 fourths times parentheses x minus 3, close parentheses, plus 4, and enter my graph. OK, could we have done this? without implicit differentiation? How could we have done this without implicit differentiation? Jake? Solve for y in the original equation by taking, by subtracting x squared and then taking the square root of the whole thing would give you uh, the root of 25 minus x squared, right? Absolutely. So long as we consider both the positive and negative square root. So we could generate y explicitly in terms of x. Depending upon which, where my point of tangency is, I would differentiate one of these arcs. In this case, one of these half circles, right? Is my point of tangency on the top half or bottom half of this circle? The top half. So I'll differentiate y equals the positive square root of 25 minus x squared. And I'll do that using our power rule, right? Isn't this quantity, quantity, 25 minus x squared to the 1 half, right? So I would use the power rule to differentiate that and generate a first derivative given by 1 half quantity 25 minus x squared to the negative 1 half times the derivative of the base. And what's the derivative of the base? Negative 2x. And so this derivative, right, this derivative clearly is not as pretty as the implicit derivative. I'd solve for y and differentiate, right, and then rewrite. It'll be a little bit messier. I'm getting y equals negative x over square root of 25 minus x squared. Is that what you guys are getting? OK. So I don't know about you guys, but I like negative x over y. right? That's a lot nicer and easier to evaluate than negative x over the square root of quantity 25 minus x squared. And so there are certain advantages to either defining and or differentiating a, a relation implicitly. So yes, we could now enter that in our graphing calculator. We could get our slope of the tangent. We could do a little picture. And we were right. We were on the top half of that circle. There we see it. There's our 3 comma 4. Here's our tangent line equation, negative 3 fourths was our slope, I remember. And if we had isolated and solved for y, it would give us that y-intercept. So were we able to differentiate the equation explicitly to generate the slope of our tangent line? Yes, we were, right? But it was, well, kind of a bear, right? It was kind of a bear. And so, gosh, I wish that the USB import wasn't, wasn't messing up our audio, because I'd love to hear the bear song right now. And so that's why it makes sense to define a variety of, of relations implicitly. All right, go ahead and show me that you get it now with your partner. Let's generate y prime, given an implicit relation 2xy plus y squared equals 3. I'm going to circulate around the room, and I want you to catch my eye if you have a question. And keep in mind, you're going to be sharing them. You'll be sharing your response with what you want to
and it's okay to talk with your partner, make sure you're using the product rule for that very first term. Oh, you guys are doing great. After differentiating both sides with respect to x, I'm going to go ahead and add or subtract to get all my y prime terms on one side and everything else on the other. For us, that means just subtracting over the two y terms. Now I have both, both y prime terms on one side, but I have more than one y prime. And I want to solve for y prime. I want a single y prime isolated on one side. So what can we do? We can factor out that y prime in a reverse distributed property problem. I'll factor out the y prime, leaving me with 2x plus 2y, right, times quantity y prime. That equals the left-hand side. Equals, and then my right-hand side remains negative 2y. We can finish out as Paul told us before. We can divide both sides by quantity 2x plus 2y in order to get my y prime along. So my final answer would be y prime equals negative 2y over 2x plus 2y. There's my y prime. So I get opposite of 2y all over 2x plus 2y quantity in the denominator. Why don't you take a look at your y prime? Sophia? Um, can we factor out the 2? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We could have reduced that here, 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 right? If every factor out of the 2, I like that much better. So what I'm going to do is divide out a 2 from every single factor, thank you very much, and get negative y over x plus y. That looks much better. So then I'm going to steal that. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Cheeky bugger. That's much better, Sophia. Thank you. So raise your hand if you got the equivalent. We got that already? Yes! Good job, you guys. And what about... Ooh! So I saw this a couple years back in a release practice exam, right? Where we've got sine of xy equals 2x. Let's find y prime. Can we do that? Well, yeah, x's and y's are mixed together on the same side. No problem. We've got our implicit differentiation as our technique will handle that. So go ahead and try that. After a little bit, I'll go ahead and show my differentiation. We can compare. 
Think about how you'd handle that with a chain rule. What? Secant? I thought the derivative of sine was cosine. Where's that secant coming from? Where's that secant coming from? Well, we're going to have a fraction within a fraction if we don't rewrite that 2 over cosine. Remember, the reciprocal identities, so the reciprocal of cosine and <laughs> secant. That 2 over cosine xy could be rewritten as 2 secant xy, and then we won't have a fraction within a fraction, which of course would be bad math manners. We don't want that. So we could rewrite it like this. We're isolating that y prime by subtracting the other terms and then dividing to undo that multiplication. Annika? Um, I thought, well, I'm like, I got things and things, but I was wondering, like, I just multiplied both sides by 1 over x to get. Yep. So, like, is it wrong if you do 2 minus y over x and then x plus y? 2 minus y. Yes. Uh, be careful with your order of operations. If you're going to write it as a single fraction, that y term would need the cosine x as well. You know, you know what I'm saying? It, it, because this cosine x y only only applies to the two here. You know what I mean? So you need to make a common denominator if you're going to do this. It's two separate ones. But yes, oh, okay. this could be rewritten in several different ways. True. Good job. All right. Go ahead and raise your hand if you have the equivalent then for y prime. The equivalent, so you handle the product rule inside the derivative of the angle. Way to go, you guys. That's awesome. Okay. So let's go ahead and try this stretcher. We want to know where is x squared minus xy plus y squared equals 12 parallel to 2x minus y equals 17. So we've got a couple of different layers here in this problem. We want to know where a particular relation, which we've seen already kind of looks maybe like a like a like an oval, right, or an ellipse, or a football. We want to know where is that relation. So what point x comma y, if any, is it parallel to this line? Right? So there's a, an extra step here. So let's go ahead and see if you and your partner can figure that out. Using what we know about implicit differentiation and slopes.
So what would be true if those two relations were parallel? What would have to be true if those two relations were, were parallel? Mm -hmm. um, they would have the same slope. The same slope. And so how could you determine right, what points those relations have the same uh, slope? Well, we want to see where the slope of the first relation is equal to the slope of the second relation. I just reordered that second relation. If we solve that for y, it's easy to pick out the slope. What's the slope of that, that line in the right hand side, Allie? Two. Two. So we want to see where is the slope of this relation, x squared minus xy plus y squared, which is similar to the football one we saw before. Where is the slope of that equal to two? Well, how can we figure that out? Field trip to Wannable, pack it in early. Let's call our day, guys. Yeah. Riley? I'm trying to figure it out myself. Maybe I'll figure it out. Good. Riley, were you raising your hand? Um, well, we, well, with the, um, that y minus y1 equals mx minus x1, Yes. the m value was equal to y1, which is the slope at the point, right? The, the the m value is equal to y1. So if we find if we use the slope of that equation, since they're parallel, the slope should be the same. And you can say that y1 equals y prime equals two. Yes. I, I'm gonna say that this y prime equals two and see if we can't figure out some x comma y coordinates that makes that true. So let's set our y prime equal to two. Right, and let's see if we can solve. So how can we solve that? Well, we can multiply over and see if that does anything for us. Zero. So I multiply it over. I multiply it over. And it appears as though when y equals zero, right, my slope y prime equals two. We can see through inspection that yes, that's the case. If y over zero, I get negative two x over x, I'm mean, sorry, over negative x is positive 2. And so when y equals 0, but that doesn't tell us where because, right, if y equals 0, then we still have an x coordinate. So where can we go to figure out the x coordinate when y equals 0? We could go right in my original, right, and figure out when that happened. And so we'll go into my original. So I said 3y. Uh, I subtracted over this y. So I subtracted over the y from 4y okay. got 3y. Let's go ahead and see what happens then. So x squared minus x times 0 plus 0 squared equals 12. Ah, and so if y is 0, it appears as though two places on the curve have a slope right, of 2, and I'd be given by x equals plus and minus root 12 which means one place is 2 root 3 comma 0, and one point where the relation is parallel to the line would be what? What would the other place be? Negative, Negative 2 root 3 comma 0. Well, that was a stretcher. All in good fun, though, guys. Let's finish up with our closer today. So you're going to have a chance to earn stamps. If you show me these, if you show me, because of our rules quiz, we didn't have the work time today. If you show me these, and then the beginning of class during bar work, I'll still get full credit. We've got stamps at number three, what your y equals, your, I'm sorry, your y prime equation is, and then 7a, and you will have to use the quadratic formula for the backside 7a. I'll write that up on the board so we have it. 
So number three, and then seven A. And let's finish up with our closure then for the day. So what's the difference between explicit and implicit relations? Please write that down. Don't say it out loud. We're going to calculate each of the following. If you're ready to share a response, we've got about four minutes, so the time is going to work out perfectly. But I'd like to see a written response on everybody's closure slide, please, for the end of day five minutes. Make sure we're all good to go. So for two, we don't have to isolate any Y prime. We just want to differentiate first step with respect to X to make sure I know where the Y primes are coming from, but you don't have to do any solving. OK, so what's the difference between explicit versus implicit relations? How could you describe that to, to a peer? Allie? Um, explicit variable, like it's one of the variables to isolate on one side, and implicit is one of the variables you make sense. Absolutely, thank you. So one variable is solve for in terms of others, right? In terms of others versus an implicit defined relation, then our variables are mixed up together on the same side of the equation. Expect x of 4x to the fifth. Be ready, Savannah. Um, 20x. We're going to get the same as Savannah. 20x to the fourth. Good. Next. Differentiating with respect to x all the way through left side. What do you have for that, Evie? 20y to the fourth y prime plus 1 plus y. We're going to get the same as Evie. That's correct. Good job with the chain rule. And lastly, the derivative with respect to x of xy would be Kobe. Y prime plus y. Yes. And typically I do it the other I do the first time the second plus, but because it's addition order it doesn't matter. So y plus x y prime would also be correct. Raise your hand to the same as Kobe. Great work, you guys. Awesome job. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording now. You did a great job today with our implicit differentiation.